Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we'll be finishing Bricky's every single Warhammer Space Marine Legion in a nutshell. Last time around, we got to the favorite Space Marine Legion of Bricky's, the Night Lords, which is not a sentence that terrifies me or makes me absolutely terrified of the man as a person or just randomly scared in general because I remember what the Night Lords are and that people actually like them because of that aspect, not because of Aaron Dembski Bowden's book, which was really good, I've heard, but also because they liked them before that because someone looked at, ooh, they get to wear skin, yay, and thought that was a good idea. Yeah, I'm not thinking that at all, and I would never do that because that would be terrifying. More importantly, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up, and let's do something that doesn't involve wearing people's skin. You have not done the dishes for Blood five angels. years. So embarrassed when people come over here. Well, what does it matter? You bring them over, you kill them. Vampires what don't do dishes. The blood. I don't know that, but for some reason, I'm thinking I've heard it somewhere before. That's going to bug me. Angels. Allegiance? Loyal. Eh. Primark? Sanguinius. An angel. A vampire. A deadass motherfucker. Sing Oddly enough, they don't really play with the vampire aspect nearly as much as I thought they would. They kind of touch on it, but a lot of the models barely even do it. Single I mean, Mephiston kind of has it. Blood. The Blood Angels are Ninth Legion, hailing from the homeworld of Baal, with their Primarch, Sanguinius. The Blood Angels- Wait. Oh, he has curls? You know, I've actually seen this picture multiple times before. It's a cover for, I think, Sanguinis' book. I never realized he actually had the hair and curls. I've never bothered to look closely at it. Huh. The more you know. The Blood Angels are a tragic tale with one of the best Primarchs, one beloved by almost everybody. Including a Horus. A genuine angelic figure who led his people to glory, killed by the hands of the traitor Horus before the... Ooh... Sorry, this came out a year ago. Yeah, this was a little before the end of the death. Part three came out and you saw just how Sanguinius died, proving that if he had ignored his visions, he didn't have to die because literally nothing he did mattered after getting on the vengeful spirit, which it's kind of slap in the face. But also, if that slap in the face comes out with any future site being absolutely useless and maybe making Conrad Kurz live because fuck him, and that would be the most important thing you could possibly do to hurt him. I w okay, I would, I would call that even. The Emperor's eyes. That's the said. death of Oof. their Primarch led the entire Legion to madness as their gene seed yeah. malfunctioned and created something because known it's as all the psychic. Black Rage. The Blood the Angels degrade horse, over Gene. time, experiences something called the Red Thirst, which gives them a genuine vampire. GW has sort of confirmed every single Primarch will eventually return. And, um, spoilers, massive spoilers. I'm about to say more than what I already did. Horus uh, wasn't entirely soul destroyed at the end. He was forgiven and body destroyed or killed, but not soul destroyed. So, uh, yeah. If Horus does return and Sanguinius returns, I think that would be a change in legions because there's a lot of people with black rage who are going to do some really bad shit. That seems like a time bomb if they ever decide to do that. Although as GW, as much as they'd like to move the story forward sometimes, they also don't like to move the story forward sometimes. So they might ignore that plot point. Kind of like the Primaris being a thing, even though they you know, made you replace all your models. And it's like, oh, by the way, we're not doing anything with it. We're just going to ignore it and never sell the old models. So you already replace it, so it doesn't matter. <sighs> Empiric thirst for blood. As their minds degrade and break down, they get angrier and angrier, becoming berserk killing machines with no other goal than to tear everything in sight apart. But they don't... You know, it just actually occurred to me that that is literally a description of most of the other Marines. They're just berserk killing machines that tear everything else apart. That That's kind of a lot of the other ones, and also the world eaters. Huh. Don't see it as that. They They're see angrier and murderier. There, at their Primarch's demise, with Horus in sight. And to them, it's time for vengeance. And that it goes about as well as it did for Sanguinius. That Space Marine? That's Horus. Kill him. That Orc War Boss over there? Horus. Kill him. That Tyranid Swarm? 1,000 Horuses. Horai. Kill them all. Did your toast come out a little bit burnt? Horus sabotaged your toaster. Bricky. Why is this the most cursed image of Horus I've ever seen? And I mean, we've seen him go full demon. Well, demon Primarch-ish. I guess more ever-chosen equivalent. And this is the most cursed image of Horus I have ever seen. That looks wrong. 
I, I don't know why it looks wrong. It's just, I, I think it's because he's smiling. That's, that's not normal. I, I don't like it. No, no, why? Destroy the toaster. Destroy it. Do it. Do it. Kill your toaster. Do it. This. That joke hits a lot differently if you're a Battlestar Galactica fan. It's actually a lot funnier that way. Fucking toasters. Sorry, fracking toasters. My apologies. Slow, debilitating disease takes over the blood angels and it Is gives it them this angelic, vampire, and Catholic-inspired imagery. They have chalices of blood. They rest in coffins and can even use psychic power. I'm sorry, did that say Airbnb? It, it, could, it actually does say Airbnb. I'm going to tell myself this is AI generated because I don't want to consider the alternative. They can even use psychic powers to sprout angel wings from their bodies. They are a tragedy through and through, and the only thing that will look more tragic are the mangled bodies of those they come in contact with. Make sure it's the enemies. Oh, Iron Hands. What song? Sounds like Dolly Parton. I have no idea what song that is. I don't know a lot of Dolly Parton's music. I mostly know what she's done after retiring from music, which is admittedly also kind of amazing. But yeah, I'm not sure if that's her or not. The Iron Hands. Also, I have no idea where he got this image, but I absolutely love it. I wish the helmet actually had the mechanized portions like this, but there's no way they can model that on a, well, 32 millimeter scale. Allegiance, loyalist. Primark, Ferris Manus, a machinist, an inventor, and not a great head on his shoulders. Okay, one, classy art. Two, oh god, that that was not even. A, oh, that's like a me level pun. Single oh, order. wait, what did he just say? He just put what did he put in there at the very end? Yeah, yeah, it was like a single second. What did you have? Fucking fulcrum spoiled plot. Pos. I actually don't know what that means. Single word? Bionics. Bionics yeah. Baby! Although it's more like Necron, the iron but details. Hands are from the home planet of Medusa, and their primarch they were, uh, Ferris Necron Manus. Hand. Does Ferris Manus have an iron hand? Necrodermis, I think. You fucking know he's got an yeah. iron hand. The iron hand is converted. The flesh is weakness. But despite all of their enhancements, despite all the things that made them demigods, replacing some of the flesh with bionics will allow them to serve the Emperor more. They go. Yeah, it's like, hey, remember how we did all that work to make you more than human? We're also going to then cut those parts out and put on other things. I think this is art that came out old school, but it kind of looks like some of the dreadnoughts that GW has put out recently. Huh. Just without the big piece on top. Also, I wonder if he's going to mention that the other defining trait of Ferris Manus is that somehow, out of all of the Primarchs, including Angron... Ferris Manus had the distinction of being the biggest asshole. Yeah, including Angron. Yeah, I don't get it either, but also he lives down to it because whenever he's on screen, he is. I was going to make a joke about getting ahead, but that's a little off the shoulders. No harm into vehicles and dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts being giant walking sarcophagi that have it's like when you put bigger guns on things from the inside. It does more vehicles, metal upgrades. These are upgrades, the things people. that make up this legion. Oh, Their tech marines have servo arms sticking out from all directions. They have a wide array of mechanics and extremely often replace limbs with metal. Oh, did that actually a baby carrier version of it? Oh, I think they did. That is... Okay, that is neat. I thought it was a general dreadnought at first. I was like, no, no, they're, they're still there. They have the body around it. This is the one Legion where having a baby carrier version actually makes a lot of sense. They often replace limbs with metal ones, serving all kinds of different functions to deal with their enemies. The Iron Hands are also not particularly nice. Uh, they're oh, he's getting to assholes. it. I mean, Marines are already normally pretty big assholes, but but they, they're a little bit up there because of their... Ugh, flesh, ugh, civilians made of flesh, ugh, ugh. Because you see, the flesh is weak. Flesh. Okay, holy shit, Ricky. I have no idea where you got this art. I'm assuming it might be AI, but it looks way too stylized. That is intense. If this was a GW specific lieutenant model for the Iron Hands, goddamn.
I wouldn't be usually tempted to buy an Iron Hands or, well, a Lieutenant in general because there's so goddamn many. But that would be one hell of a design. Flesh is corruptible. Bionics. The strength of the machine is pure and cannot so easily be corrupted. Even though so if you want people who have this little techno fetishistic vibe to them that love their vehicles and their walking coffee. And also who aren't so spindly that if you breathe on them at the wrong angle, they will snap in half. I'm looking at you every Mechanicus thing that's not a robot. Spins. Hit up the iron hands. You understand, Commander? I was never here. Legion 11. I know that's James Earl Jones, but I have no idea where. At least I assume that's James Earl Jones. I could be mistaken. No, maybe it's not James Earl Jones. Ah, I know that voice. <laughs> What 11th Legion? Please stand by. Bricky and Co. does not infer the existence of any legions that may have been, <laughs> definitely never did exist by any stretch of the imagination. Or, sorry, definition. Yeah, they don't exist. They are a complete mystery. Why, well, hello there. I have Although, now that I think about it, there were a lot of references to them in the Horus Heresy. Nothing explicit, but also... They came right up to the line of talking about them, including acknowledging that the reason the Ultramarines got so big isn't because everyone else was dead, but also because at least one of the two other missing legions kind of just got slotted in with the Ultramarines. So, yeah, if you're playing Ultramarines, you might also be playing one of the missing legions. Further proof that technically Games Workshop never actually wanted you to play Ultramarines. They're not the ones who are always winning. It was the two imaginary legions that definitely don't exist because the power of imagination always wins. Unless you're an orc, in which case that's actually not a joke. Return from um, touching grass. You did that? Know. I'm pretty cool no. with the grass touching. And... Think about what you just said. Just think about what you said. Ah, uh, yeah. Gr Bricky does like there that grass. Yeah. I think he likes to mow that grass, if you know what I mean. It means he's in the yard work. I'm not. Fuck that. Also, hay fever. Fuck that as well. Now let's continue our Warhammer lecture. This World Eaters. Jammies. Okay, so what's going on here? What? The world. Oh! Oh, that would be Dragon Ball Z a bridge with Frieza. Oh, dude, I knew I recognized that. Oh, I need to rewatch that show someday. World Eaters, Allegiance, Heretic, Primarch, Angron, Angry. a Butcher, a Slaughterer. Like extremely, earth-shatteringly, unreasonably fuck-ass man. Single word yeah. descriptor, Anger. Hey, you. Honestly, I would say daddy issues, but that's kind of on all of them. Ooh. Yeah, you. Are you mad? That is disturbing, you face. Just... Nerd rage. He has nerd rage. I got murder. Damn everything is exciting. Get rewarded for doing Never something. That. You should join the want world to. eaters. Home planet of Nuceria and Primarch Angron, who, if the name didn't suggest, is real fucking angry. Angron was raised a slave, forced to fight in gladiator pits. When he refused, they shoved old world tech into his brain so that if he ever felt any emotion other than anger, it caused him extreme pain. All his sons, wanting to be like their dad, also put a version of these nails in their brain. So now you have an entire legion who literally feel unimaginable pain if they are feeling any emotion other than anger. Also, I should probably point out, because he's going to get around to it, but all of this is before they went traitor. Yeah. Angron, th there was very little difference between them loyalist and them traitor. If anything, they are more sane now, because there's no shining veneer of, why aren't they just red all the time? To, okay, no, they're just red all the time. I'm pretty sure they never actually painted their armor. It's still just blood. Slap them with a freight train of armor, two goddamn chainsaw axes, and you can see what's gonna happen. It's no wonder they're corrupted yeah. by corn. They're honestly a surprisingly sad legion that I actually screwed up in assuming that they were all just angry murderers. I mean, they are. Yeah. They're probably the most pathetic and pitiable legion. I put Death Guard after that just because, personal opinion. But. Yeah, I'm with him on this one. But they didn't start out that way. Their corn corruption degraded their intelligence, their free will, and made powerful warriors into arguably even more powerful warriors, but 
blunt, like, frothing at the mouth psycho warriors. The yeah. world eaters, like I mentioned, the space wolves, they, they wear their concept on their sleeve. They are angry. And their chest and their face and their guns and their weapons and their legs. They walk through the concept. If you get the reference, it's blood. Yeah, they're, they're just blood everywhere. They want to kill things. They want to kill you and maybe some of their friends. And that's... That's the fact. That's fine. They're yeah. red. They're mad. They're going to run at you and cause death. If you like that, you I should probably point out, Ed, he did this a year ago. I'm pretty sure the 8th Legion did have its release. So they do have their own specific faction now. And it looks cool, but I'm sorry. I love melee in 40k. I know it's not good at the time I'm saying this, but it's so freaking cool. It's, uh, but I'm not tempted to do this. I'm not tempted. I, I would never... Buy an entire army based on something Bricky did. I, uh, that has never happened before. I have not been learning how to paint silver because of that. This is, I'm, I'm distracting myself. I'm not looking at the screen intentionally. It, it's an accent. I, I'm not tempted. This is not temptation. Fuck you, Bricky. I don't want to buy another army. I don't have the money for that. That's way too expensive. God damn it. Lego world eaters. Or you like it because they were, you know. At one point, a lot better than that. Most yeah. of Warhammer was a lot better than that. I was once a lot better than that. that was one Admittedly, I think the Ultramarines actually improved. Somehow, there is less of a stick in their ass in 40k as opposed to 30k. I know what I said. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of fucked up. But also, just to go back to what he said about how they were not always like that, he mentioned they wanted to be like Daddy, so they stuck knives in their head. Yeah, that's also a completely accurate way to describe it, basically. But a lot of it was... Earlier he mentioned with Sanguinius how they got corrupted through the gene seed. There's a psychic component. They like to follow what their dad does. It's why there are very few loyalists unless their Primarch is absolutely horrible. Yeah. Also, apparently there was a lot of word bearer loyalists. A lot of them died. For obvious reasons, a certain planet that got fire spawned. But the world bearers are just always. I think they have an entire faction in canon that did stay loyal, but I don't remember what it is called for some reason. I, I just want to highlight that there is a lot of dialogue with Karn the Betrayer, how he has the axes that were thrown away by Karn whenever he. Not Karn. Angron. Wow, I keep getting those names mixed up. And he has the axes thrown away, and that's the betrayal to take the axe that Karn, that Angron was using. I don't know why I have a hard time with those two. And, I mean, there's a lot more than that. He's also a lot of betrayals on top of that with other people. Same with Lucius. And just, there's a lot going on here. I, I don't have time to summarize Horus Heresy. No one has time for that. Because it's a lot of books. Like, just over a decade or plus. But the entire concept is because they want to be like daddy, they went from noble gladiators who were brutal, but had a distinct sense of martial honor to about as much honor as Karn likes to say he has, but really it's none. Yeah. It really is a sad legion because a lot of them just didn't want to be cast out because they had a very tight-knit community. And when the giant bomb that was Angron was dropped in it, that community did not go well. When I was in college, I didn't finish college, and neither did really? Angron. Oh. Oh. It's, it, it must, it is. Probably saved hey, money. Caesar. It's not done by sunrise. I'll cut you. Ah, I know that one. Monty Python's Holy Grail. It balls off. The Ultramarines. Nice. Allegiance, loyalist. Primarch, Rabute Gilliman. That's how, yeah, that's how it's said. An analyst, a diplomat. French name. A blueberry boy scout. Single word descriptor. Duty. When you see Space Marines on a box or just Space Marines in promotional material, notice yeah. how they are always colored blue. These are the blue Space Marines. Admittedly, I thought that was just because initially every other color they had sucked. So they just went with the color that was easiest to paint for newbies. Admittedly, it's also why I liked it because you could actually just get decent blue paints in most ranges and it was fine. And then if you try their white or their yellow or some of their reds, the reds got better, but uh, oh God, they, they are... There are some colors that are rough, man. I literally believe that's the entire reason these guys became the poster child. Because other people wouldn't rage quit the game having failed to paint it. 
the, these ones here, the Ultramarines, who hail from the world of Macrog with their Primarch Robute Gorilla Man. Ultramarines are, are the white bread right. of Space Marines, the, the grilled chicken with salt and pepper. And this is by no means an insult. They are plain Jane, but that's also because they are so goddamn good at their job. Their skill for warfare is par- Oh, that is disturbing. Don't usually see that many Ultramarines with that level of prosthetics in the sense that they just kept the rest of the cheek in there, but then took everything else out. Yeah, that is almost like iron hands just with a blue paint job. Weird. Kind of cool looking, though. I mean, they do also have a very Roman aesthetic, but that one is... Uh, they were blueberries and the... Uh, plain vanilla space marine legion before the roman aesthetic was really hyped up and even then yeah whether it actually is or is not really depends on how much you're willing to kit bash because no one should buy the upgrade sprues they are a giant waste of money paramount but so is their ability for leadership Gilliman for a while was a damn boring Primarch for all the reasons 30K. he was great. Because no matter how hard you try, you don't win a war without logistics, without supply lines, without trade routes, without infrastructure and economy. You don't win anything without all that stuff, and Gilliman knows it. Which is why he has one of the largest standing empires in the Imperium, named Ultramar. Which is why his sons are the most recognizable of all the Space Marines. Which is why the only thing that rivals the weight of their victories is the weight of their egos they are good at everything and bad at nothing they are great at everything other legions can do other things better than them but they are good at everything the most interesting thing about the ultramarines is their characters as they are all now inflicted with various amounts of ultra depression for many reasons gilliman is at the time of recording the only playable primark really september you know i'm gonna be mistaken here but i thought the lion had come out by now in 2022. So it's a little more than a year then. Yeah, okay, that makes a little more sense. Because I think he came out in 23. But he probably heard the rumors about this. Also, damn! I have not been able to paint anything with that level of detail on the face. Holy shit. You ever just see someone's paint job and you realize you got a lot of work to do? I mean, constantly, all the time. I've looked at anything about any models ever, and I've seen in my paint job, I realize that. But this is just, god damn, there's the source lighting on here, the side of it, and ah! Did they paint on the face, or is that actual lighting detail? I do not know. Currently on the tabletop, and the only one that has returned to the 41st millennium for yeah. the Royalist side. And they he nerfed him because they didn't want you to buy him anymore. And his empire has become and immediately wanted to fucking die. Being forced to lead everything he once hated, an Imperium rotten to its core with his sole responsibility to... And I don't think he'll mention this because it's super niche, but there's this tiny little part about it. Because of events in 30k, Gilliman really hated Lorgar. I mean, everyone really hates Lorgar because Lorgar. But Gilliman really does. There is an entire mark of Kalf, and it's uh, a thing about we're still counting based on fuck you Lorgar time. Is that exactly the reason why? Actually kinda is. So the big thing about going to 40k is seeing this, seeing the religion, seeing the religion around his dad who didn't want to ever be a god and how this is all a betrayal of everything they stood for is kinda right and Lorgar's book, Deifying the Emperor, might be accurate and he's just sitting there going, I hate this because Lorgar might have been right before he then became wrong again because he can't ever stay right. That there is a significant part of the lore that is Lorgar is fucked even if he has to do it himself. I know what I said and I stand by that in every possible way you can interpret that. Save it. It's kind of what makes him interesting. They are yeah. perfectly standard legion. In 30 he's kind of Perfectly boring. standard ideals. And great if you want a simple, clean slate. Uh oh. Also just pointing out there. Also the death card for the same reason. Really easy to paint. They're just so good paints. Uh, from almost any single manufacturer I've seen, they just... Blue seems to work really well. I found very few bad blue paints. I've seen some really bad everything else. But blue and green are pretty good. The green at the worst is just too thin. You just add more layers until it looks right. Oh, stinky. Funny poop. Poop funny. Woo! The Death Guard. Not even gonna ask. Allegiance? Heretic, Primarch, Mortarian, a reaper, a poison, an ungodly stench. Single word descriptor, rot. The Death Guard hail from Barbaros. 
it blew up because Johnny thought it was smelly. Not wrong and probably safer considering that was a demon infested and Nurgle ridden planet prior to the, or not lion, prior to the emperor even getting Mortarian off there. Yeah, admittedly, there's a lot of planets that probably should have been blown up immediately. With the Primarch Mortarium, the 14th Legion were known for their incredible resilience to damage. That's a lot of damage. Where the Imperial Fists were defensive thanks to tactics and posturing, the Death Guard were resilient because they could take a punch or, or a thanks. gut shot or, or a Nope, nope, this is an old timey thing. I'm not even going to ask about it. Cannon to the chest and, and just Why? keep on moving. They are slow, yet they are resistant, which was only confounded as a Death Guard captain, Typhus, codename Dickhead, sold. Wait, that's what Typhus looked like? I'm used to seeing him this way. I always thought he'd have some like crazy, stupid face in there. And yeah, oh, he has a little bit of the tattoo up there with the. Taking a little book out of Erebus on that, unless that's supposed to be hair follicles, in which case that's stupid. But yeah, he has the scraggly, unkempt beard. I mean, can you imagine some asshole doing that? Hair pulled back to the side, just something on the side of their head. I mean, that is such a dick look, man. Yeah, I, I don't see why anyone would actually, like, Look at this guy and not want to punch him in the face. Dickhead sold them out to Nurgle, god of rot and decay. Now, the Death Guard are a Nurgle worshipping... Oh, that is so cool. I know they have variations of these as different pieces, but dear God, some of the Death Guard Legionnaires are so freaking creative, man. The first models I painted were Ultramarine and Death Guard. I don't play the Death Guard because they're just too slow for me to enjoy it. I don't like slow models. But... I love some of the crazy details you can put on there and how gross you can make them. I might eventually just buy more Death Guard to paint them and then sell them all because I don't want them. I just want to paint them. Oh, but I love the eye on the side and the dripping barrel. I just, oh, this is actually making me want to do it now. And I can't. Legion, whose ability to feel pain and take damage has all but just gone away. They wade yeah, through gunfire, able to lore. kill normal Marines 10 times over and Ooh. continue unharmed. All while spreading rot and disease in the name of their dark, very stinky master. Where the yep. Death Guard enter, plague spreads. People get sick and they die. They spread and come back. disease to all around them. Why would a Legion need to be anything more than very tanky when their enemies are falling over, puking, firing out of both ends, and having their skin peel off just by their presence entire worlds yeah. infested with a zombie rot swarms of insects that eat flesh and metal alike all while the legion advances slowly painfully allowing the disease they spread to take its toll before they reap the lives they believe belong to them and look at mortarian's model dude the man is baller as fuck a gigantic moth with a gigantic scythe come on now yeah, admittedly mortarian is one of the coolest models out there the only reason I prefer Magnus is just because more interesting colors usage. And even then, that's just if you go with the cannon colors. Ugh. Especially how they're highlighting individual ridges on the face. Up close, you can see how it's such an obvious way to do it. But they even got the eyes in there and they're not in a stupid way, which is really damn hard. Oh, I'm having painting envy right now. Also, I just love green and brass colors. That's It's so good, man. Scythe, come on now. The Death Guard. Thousand track. Sons. Speaking of Magnus. I'm gonna fucking kill myself. The Thousand what? Sons. Allegiance? Heretic. Primarch? Magnus the Red. A scholar. Is a he gonna sorcerer, make the joke? A fucking nerd. Accurate. He's either gonna make a kitten reference or the old classic standby. Magnus did nothing wrong. Even though he literally did everything wrong. He just didn't know he did it wrong when he did it because it happened a lot sooner than he expected. Single word descriptor? Magic. The Thousand yeah. Sons hail from their homeworld of Prosper Magic got nerfed in with their Primarch Magnus the Red. The final of our four major Chaos God factions, the Thousand Sons are disciples of Zeech, the Changer of Ways. Heavily inspired by their Egyptian theming, the Legion themselves are slaves to the god of trickery and change. Most of them no longer even having a physical form. Redu this is an odd question, and I know it's probably one that people do have an answer to, but did the Thousand Suns come before the Necrons? Or at least the Egyptian theme for the Thousand Suns? Because I know the Necrons initially did not have the Egyptian theme. The Necrons were very much, we are the Terminator. Dun dun. And that was all there was to there, except then they realized, hey, we would like to not be sued. 
It's why they dropped characters like Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau, who technically has never been retconned because 40K and retcons are kind of... Is it? Is it really? No, we're just not going to mention it, but it, it's real, except unless someone's suing us, in which case, no, it's not. I don't know. So I'm not actually sure which one of these definitely Egyptian themes came first. I think it might be the Necrons, though. Used to just dust, piloting suits of armor sure. at the whim of a sorcerer leader. The Thousand Sons do not deserve their fate. There's a common joke that uh, Magnus did nothing wrong. This is untrue. He has done much wrong. However, he is very sympathetic, mainly because the Space Wolves and Lehman Russ sought to end their rivalry through the annihilation of their legion. And even then, it's because Horus was fucking around with them, forcing Magnus into a corner by giving false information. But then Lehman Russ was like, ooh, goody, an excuse, and just dove straight in. So yeah, it's not completely Wolf Boy's fault. It's mostly 80% Wolf Boy's fault. Escaping only through the assistance of the Changer of Ways and forever changed because of it. Meanwhile, Although I should probably mention, since I don't think he's getting into it, because this is minutia that doesn't really matter. The corruption at what he's talking about, how the Changer of Ways saving them from the wolves is where they went full traitor. But Magnus actually kind of made the massive mistake well before that. Before, if you know this bit lower, Nikeo, when magic was said, ha, hey, no, fuck that, sorry, psychery, bullshit. The bullshit is intentional and you have to say it every time. It's a requirement of the game. I know it's weird, but you gotta stick to that rule. Before all of that, there was a flesh change curse or whatever they call it, disease or something, where they would basically become blobs of blech. And that was bad. Magnus cured it by definitely not making a deal with the demon who may or may not have been Zinch. Because it was definitely Zinch, but I don't think they ever specifically clarified that. They just hinted at it in the most obvious way possible that if it wasn't one of his demons, it was him directly. And it doesn't really matter because that is the moment Magnus lost when he was desperate to find an answer and he went to demons. Well before he was told anything about them, well before the prohibitions against magic, well before he had any idea what was going on. And everything after that was just one continual failure after that based on him thinking, okay, that worked out. Let's see what we can do next. And it was just based on that over and over and over. His failure was going to demons in a time where it wasn't quite peace, but they didn't know they were enemies yet. And everything else was a logical conclusion as far as Zinch considers logic. He won before there was even a heresy. So there is an argument to make that Magnus was technically the first traitor. He just didn't realize it for the longest time. I personally don't subscribe to that argument, but it can be made in the crazy Zinch logic where logic doesn't actually function. You could just say whatever the fuck you want as long as you also disagree with yourself at the same time. Well, magic is their main tool. Take some Lovecraftian style abilities, the eyes mm -hmm. everywhere, and potent spells to be cast at their foes. Where these are bolts of psychic lightning, really wish they did more with like, time the itself, horrific change opening aspect up portals of to unreality, or changing the very fabric of the universe. The Thousand Sun sorcery knows no bounds, and they are very good at it. If you're a mm -hmm. fan of like wizards, your classic style of spellcaster, and you want a ton of them, Space combined nerds. with the tragic backstory in a Primarch who, like Mortarian, looks fucking baller. The yeah, Thousand Sons really are does. for you. You fucking asshole! There's oh, no God. You're cheater. The this Black Legion. Loser. You're a cheater. Hey, I get that one. I have heard that exact clip. My wife is a massive fan of the Game Grumps. I know that clip. She listens to it so freaking much. I don't remember where it's from specifically because I only hear it in the background, but I've heard it so many times. My dad works at Nintendo! The Sons of Horus, or the Luna Wolves, or the Black Legion. Allegiance? Yeah. Heretic. Primarch? Horus. A warlord. A treasured friend. Or the traitor himself. Single. And after this found out, man who is forgiven and definitely won't come back and maybe be loyal because it would be the merit of version of saying, <laughs> buy me. Word descriptor assault. The sons of Horus Boo. are the full name of Horus's legion, hailing from the world of Chthonia. The sons it blew of up. Horus. Wait, what did I say there? It blew up in what? Name of Horus's legion, hailing from the world of Chthonia. Also, I had no idea that's how you actually spell it. Because fuck you, Horus. Yeah, admittedly, and for also what you know of the planet, it was a shithole prior to that. So one other that probably should have been blown up immediately. 
The sons of Horus themselves were assault troops. The strength of their attack was get the in, most get out, go in brutal. Legions. While the White Scars may favor speed for their strikes, the sons of Horus were known for their overall offensive power. It was even said that if the sons of Horus met the Imperial Fists, they would be at a stalemate for eternity. However, the sons of Horus are no longer because, well, poke. They are now instead the bull. Again, this all came out well after what he said, but yeah, that uh, is not entirely the case anymore. He's not dead and soul destroyed and erased from existence. He's more... So you like not being a demon? Yeah. Again, I've said this multiple times in this video, and I'm probably going to say it again. Horus's change means that they now have room to say, well, maybe you want to be loyal. Also, it'd be kind of hilarious if it turned out the Ghost Legion, the Burning Legion, was actually just led by Ghost Horus. That would be funny to me. Black Legion, led by Abaddon the Despoiler, who claims to succeed where his father failed. The Black Legion. See, that's funny because that means that Abaddon succeeds. No, he doesn't. Actually, the only reason the Eye of Terror was open and all of 8th edition happened is because I think it was 5th or 6th edition, they had a tournament, and James Workshop said, hey, depending on who wins this tournament, we'll decide how the story moves forward. And then Chaos won. And GW was like, oh. Shit. We didn't plan that. Uh, ignore we said that. And multiple years later, I'm not entirely sure how long that transition period was, but it's probably closer to a decade than not. Now, whether that's six years or 10 years, I don't know, but a good bit of time. We got, oh, by the way, Abaddon wasn't just fucking around for 13 Black Crusades. He was fucking around for 12 of them. The 13th actually succeeded in cutting the galaxy in half, which is horrible, but also it was already horrible. So subjectively slightly more horrible than it already was in ways that we really haven't got the ramifications of because it already was a hellscape. Legion are still an offensive and assault based force, but they act much like the Ultramarines, but for chaos. Your standard the color black, black and brass space marine who are- Admittedly, it's a super easy paint job. You just put a black spray down and you can just dry brush on a very light layer of gold to highlight the edges and you're done. And it looks amazing, man. You can go into a lot more detail, but even just that tiny little amount right there, is so freaking clean if you do it well as long as you don't slap on the gold way too thick a very light dry brush goes a long way on this especially when it's super bright are known for recruiting in all different kinds of avenues anyone can become a member of the black yeah. legion anyone can swear allegiance to the war master you gain huh haven't seen that version of slanesh haven't seen that version of corn because he actually looks intimidating. Haven't seen Nurgle with a beard. You and as the interest part, of course. But what was that at the end? Was that the Alpha Legion? Probably a Night Lord, maybe. Oh yeah. Admittedly, I kind of wish you could actually bring in models from other legions and paint it up as other legions, just as a normal way to do it. But you kind of don't do that. Sir. You gain favor by not just one, but well, probably all four gods equally. Their famous line, let the galaxy burn, well, not is not the best way to describe them. them. It doesn't matter what the outcome oh, no, someone is. Else death so for the long death, as the Imperial the dies, That's the, one. the Black Legion has done its job. They are a legion formed from hatred and spite with a clear goal in mind. As the Admittedly, that's also very different from the guys in the Imperium who are formed from hatred and spite and a somewhat defined goal in mind of kill everything. Or the guys in the other legions who are formed from hatred and spite and a pseudo defined goal of we should probably kill everything. Or the people in the Slaneshi legions, the Emperor's children, who are formed of things that I don't think I can mention on YouTube. So let's not talk about that any further. Dark gods are calling and the Black Legion are sure to answer. Hello. Give them Oh, see, that actually, what he just said there is very unique. He's not wrong, and I think for most of the Legion, that is very accurate. They are the Legion that answers to all the gods. They follow them all. They venerate them all. But that's kind of a word bear thing, which we're getting into. Which is also the exact opposite, because a lot of the lore, not sure how new this is by comparison to when this came out, but for Abaddon, is he doesn't like chaos. 
he hates Horace because he gave in, because he lost, because he was weak. But also, Abaddon is very much the, fuck you, I'm in charge, and yeah, you're trying to fuck me over, Chaos Gods, I'm going to outdo you all, fuck you. But then also somehow it's never considered a failure, even though he was dithering around and wasting time for multiple centuries and decades and millennia. Yeah. 10,000 years to get 13 MacGuffins. Sorry, 12 MacGuffins. And 13th, he just threw at a planet. Planning. A moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Oh, no. It wasn't fucking Arsenal! <laughs> the word bears. Allegiance. That was sound. Heretic. Primarch, Lorgar Aurelian. A preacher. A fanatic. A choir boy. Single word descriptor? I'd say less choir boy and more the awkward priest who gets shuffled around to a lot of different churches if you ever ask questions. There's someone out there listening to this right now who knows exactly what I mean. I am so sorry. Not sorry enough that I won't leave this in the video, but sorry enough that you know exactly what I mean. For everyone else who's wondering, think of the worst possible joke you can imagine. Yeah. Zeal. If the Black Legion answer the call of the Dark Gods, what if instead you decide to call the gods first? Well, then the word bearers are for you. The 17th Legion, led by Primarch Lorgar on the planet of Colchis. Don't worry, it's still there. I thought it was Colchis. It wasn't blown up? Led by Why? Lorgar on the planet of Colchis. Why? This is the one planet that should be destroyed more than anything else. Originally, okay, thank God it blew up. That would be so weird if it didn't. Because fuck you, Lorgar. Admittedly, yes, but also, um, I don't think Bricky can touch on this, but uh, you know how Angron had a rough time growing up. It's not explicitly stated, but Lorgar's adopted dad might have been in that level of mental abuse. And if there were other things, they were maybe only hinted at, and I'm not going to make any justifications or assumptions about that because they are not something YouTube would appreciate. But those are debated. Originally obsessed with worshipping the Emperor of Mankind as a god, they found that despite his divinity, he was not worthy of worship. Because, I mean, he literally told them to stop and they got mad because he told them to stop. I mean, he also destroyed one of their plants, but it's small detail there. You know, he raised their equivalent of Jerusalem to the ground for daring yeah. to worship him. Like, could you imagine if, if God actually showed up and was just like, Jerusalem is stupid. It just, it just destroyed the whole thing. Like, I mean, there, there's kind of a lot of examples of that in a lot of different cultures with their capitals being destroyed or their holy sites being destroyed by the God they worship. So, yeah, yeah, I actually can pretty easily imagine it. What would that do to your head? But there are gods that want worship and will reward those who do. The word bearers are chaos worshippers. He's going to use the word faith. All under God. chaos gods. They specialize in demonic rituals, the summoning of demons, and the mutual possession of their own troops. They welcome demons to their bodies to fight as one. They exalt the dark gods themselves for aid. And guess what? they answer. In the world of 40k, Satan doesn't just call you back. He hops in his GT Mustang and he crashes on your couch. In the world- Wait, what did that say? Bruh. Bruh, these edibles had shit. Oh my god. Yeah, I could see corn being the one doing that. Not enough blood. In the world of 40k, your rituals will end with genuine results. The word bearers know this. They know through sacrifices, through devotion, through dark baptism, the gods will answer and they will be rewarded. So they use it. They bring forth demons. They bring forth possessions. They bring forth the power of the neverborn, the damned, and those that hide in the dark to bear against the Imperium. Lorgar sits there smiling as the you know this is one of those weird parts where i've talked a bit about what they're doing in 40k and there's a lot of information about a lot of the primarchs including the ones who aren't out yet like well not well magnus yeah but mortarian magnus i for a uh, fulgrim that's his name there we go i don't know why i forgot his name there's a lot of information about what he's doing only hinted at because eventually it sounds like he's coming out or they're hinting at him coming out or 
potentially the writers are trying to pressure GW into doing it by building up a groundswell by just leaving hints in their novels that GW haven't caught in time because maybe the people going through it kind of want it to happen. They just haven't got around to it yet. You know, the last one is not entirely a joke, but also it could be a joke, but it could also be completely legitimate. I'm not sure which way that goes yet. Lorgar, he's something. He's on a planet. He's being hunted by a angry bird. Beyond that, I got no idea what the hell he's doing in 40k. I don't think anyone does. It's not really a thing that gets mentioned. Truth he always knew. The existence of gods and the importance of faith is a reality. He just had to say the F word. Oh, faith. That doesn't work. Devotion. Sure. Making sacrifices, going all in on seeing results. Sure. But that faith, this is one of those things that is very much a word, a world bearer would use. Not world bearer. Word bearer would use. Because they're like, we have faith in our gods and they answer. But also, um, English nerd moment right now. That is not how that works. Faith is specifically I don't know, so I'm going to make a choice to believe, as opposed to empirical evidence, which is, I don't know, but I can see A, therefore B happens repeatedly, so I know that's not faith. That is, I am getting results back that are tangible. That is not faith. That is, you know, belief in empirical evidence. Admittedly, believing the emperor as a god is more faithful than believing the chaos gods as gods, because one actually requires faith. The other required, oh. You gave us shit. Neat. You can have devotion with that. You can have a lot of worship. Faith is a very different thing because it's a very technical word that every freaking person uses wrong. Again, this is just me nerding out over linguistics because it's like saying... Oh, there's actually a lot of words. For example, the word gay. It means happy. Fire. Saying someone is flaming was because Fire Island in New York was where there was a notable gay or gay community at the time. So it became synonymous with saying someone was flaying was like saying someone was from Fire Island, which meant saying someone was gay. But we have now said that someone's flaming gay as a saying, okay, that person is on Fire Island. They're in a good, happy mood is what it initially meant. But now it means something completely different. Words change and this hasn't changed yet. And it bugs me because everyone just gets it wrong. And it, the English language is if you're wrong often enough, long enough consistently enough it'll eventually become right so even though i'm nerding out right now i know i'm going to be wrong and it bugs me because it's just people being wrong in mass it is a tool he is using to rend the galaxy dear sir salamanders Madam. best boys fire exclamation mark fire exclamation mark. <laughs> Think that's me. monty python the but i could be mistaken allegiance loyalist primark vulcan a forge master he lives a behemoth a very huggy boy. Single word descriptor, fire. The salamanders. Really? Honestly, I thought the word would be live, but yeah, that works too. Hail from Nocturne, a volcanic planet home to their Primarch Vulcan. They are the largest of the space marines, not due to numbers, but rather size. Vulcan, it, it, he is an enormous slab of beef, by far the largest of all the Primarchs. Ooh. However, Who's don't that? let his slab of beef Who's that by that? far. Oh, Rogodorn, a human. He put himself on the human. And then Vulcan. The largest Dude. of all the Primarchs. However, admittedly, I kind of wish they had specific space marine accurate models like this where you would just have a vulcan or i mean i still like a vulcan model in general but the salamander legion specific models that were just bigger like the idea of it's a primaris marine scale back when everyone else was in firstborn scale i want that because that sounds so freaking cool man i mean you could probably proxy that with just cutting some of the iconography off of custodes wouldn't be bad but that's just way more work than I'm going to do because I'm lazy. Don't let his size fool you, as he is Gentle also giant. the kindest. Salamanders have the juxtaposition of Let's looking know. frightening, being larger than other marines, while also Glowing boasting an ashy, like, coal color skin and blazing red eyes, while simultaneously carrying around all manner of flame weaponry. So your average yep. civilian might be spooked, but in reality, they are by far the Kitty. kindest of all the legions to those Admittedly, for the size of the space marine, that is actually a massive cat. Civilians. Vulcan believes that to safeguard the Imperium is to, at the end of the day, I mean, safeguard its people. So unlike other legions who put their lives far and Bricky, I recognize that music in the background. That's freaking near Automata, man. You're going to make me cry, goddamn you. 
Never got over that game's ending. It's so freaking good. And above the average human, the salamanders spend even fits with the entire coming back more time the trying to aspect. save them, often taking numerous losses by doing so. They are very independent as well. They're forgers and blacksmiths, maintaining their own weapons and crafting versions of it. They also have the very rare privilege of being able to see their families even after becoming a space marine. They oh, he's actually going to mention that? Okay, this is actually some of the lore that is well known to people who really geek out over Space Marines, but I didn't think it was that well known. I'm actually kind of surprised he's mentioning this at all. They, they care, which is the funny part, because... And he immediately moved on. So I'll just add a little context here. When he says the privilege of seeing their families, he doesn't mean that in a, I can see letters from them, or I can see them from afar. It's like, no, no, after you become a Space Marine, you go back home. There's actually traditions where you basically become an honored elder to that family. So even if your initial family dies of old age, which, or nocturne, because it is technically a death world, you then come back and see their children and you would go, you'd have a meal with them. You talk and you just be a family and you're basically the honored grandpa who just comes back and no one really knows at this point how far back it is, but you're just grandpa that's always coming. You basically go into honorary grandpa status, even though you are probably the great, 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 great uncle at this point. Yeah. And it's kind of amazing that's legitimately actually in 40k lore that someone decided to un -grim derp just for this aspect. And it's freaking amazing, man. And again, the most hospitable and homely world is still a death world of fire and everyone is dying. But also family. Uh, there's a meme in there somewhere, but I think it would be weaker than family. The seven and a half foot tall giant with flaming red eyes who just reduced a traitor to bubbling metal says, You have nothing to fear, young citizen. Take my hand. If you enjoy fire, melting things, and being the nicer. Oh, dude. Oh, that is so cool. The little extra they put there with the bones of the giant jaws. Oh. <laughs> I don't even think that's an upgrade kit. I think that's just something someone kit bashed. That looks so cool. Going from the more Salamander Legion because there's giant lizards on Nocturne. Of the Marines, oh. Salamanders are for you. Raven Guard. Ooh, speaking of angry birds. Sneak attack! attacks don't work if you yell it out loud. The Raven. Oh, Avatar. I don't know why I didn't. Because I've only ever seen the two worst episodes of the first Avatar. Yeah. My initial opinion of Korra was that it was better than the initial one because I had only ever seen the goddamn cave episode. It just was the only one that was ever on for the longest time. I know I need to get around to fixing it. I've heard it's great if you don't watch that one episode. But that's the only one I ever saw, so I had a very bad opinion of the show. It's completely undeserved. I'm aware. Guard. Allegiance. Loyalist. Primark. Corvus Corax. A raven. Off doing bird a things. shadow. An industrial dance, DJ. Single word. Admittedly, this is actually a really wrong picture of him. It implies he has pigment in his skin. He's like reverse Vulcan, where his eyes are supposed to be black like that. But also, he should be ashy and white and almost albino levels, just without the red eyes. In the same way that Vulcan's people, it doesn't matter. It's not a racial thing. It's a very much nocturne and space marine bullshit genetics of your skin is now just pigmentation. It's not black as in African-American or from various continents within Africa. It's you are going to be painted with the color black and then we're going to lighten you up by putting some gray armor on you. And is it gray? It still looks black as well. A single word gray descriptor? Stealth. The Raven yeah. Guard are the final Loyalist Legion at 19 and hail from the planet Deliverance with Primarch. Oh, see, that's not fair, Bricky. No one knows what the Alpha Legion are, so they may or may not be Loyalist. And they could also be both at the same time if they decide to follow two from Primarchs, who are Corvus both dead, but also Corax. probably not. If it hasn't been made clear enough already, the Raven Guard are stealth specialists and proficient in all manners of assassination. Despite this, their signature winged jump pack and double lightning claw look is, well... Not very stealthy. They are named after... Hey, I saw that one. Flash gets nice. Of course, the Raven, and embody the entire concept of it as a What's herald the guard, of though? death. They are stealthy, patient hunters that have no problem with waiting and waiting and waiting until the moment to strike is at hand. It's not easy being a stealth faction when your stealth involves people in one ton of power armor, but they find a way. If he doesn't make a joke to the stupid baby walker with the gun on its hip. Uh, I have the model. It's stupid and I love it. So Wait, you get that a more than anything, it. it should not be used to show how ridiculous 40k is. But it could be. 
even though it is, but rather to show how good the Raven Guard are at their jobs. It's not about them sneaking around you without being seen, but it's also about them having lied in wait for so long that- Admittedly, what he's saying is completely right, and that is reflected in how they're portrayed, but also there are hints that because every Primark has some little, <laughs> that's definitely not magic aspect about them, the definitely not magic aspect about them is we are really good at stealth when we really shouldn't be. Kind of like just being ignored easier when they really shouldn't be. Not that they don't have to be stealthy. It just works a little better. And it wasn't until they were in striking distance that you even realized they had been there. And also, if you want, you know, edgelord marines with a long black haircut, pale yep. skin, ravens. That See, this, this is actually the right amount of pigmentation. No pigmentation at all. Yeah. Everywhere. If you want to field assassins it's basically and snipers painted abound, goth. then the Raven Guard are for you. He could be in this Alpha very region. room. He could be you. He could be me. He could even be... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh. What? It was obvious! The Alpha <gasps> Legion. Oh, I... Uh, I know I've heard that clip somewhere. It's gonna bug me now. It's weird seeing their armor blue and white. Allegiance? Heretic. Ish. Primark, Alpharius, and Omegon. Saboteurs, destabilizers, they're in your walls. Single word Probably literally sometimes. Espionage. Finally, the 20th Legion. The also, I don't think he'll get to this because it's something that Horus Heresy added in, but I don't think it really ever got play anywhere else. Cool thing about them, they didn't consider Space Marines the only part of the Legion. At least during the Horus Heresy time, the Legion was made up of whoever the fuck would listen to them. So you could be a regular person mopping the floor, unupgraded, and you would be counted as a legionnaire of the Alpha Legion if you did the job and followed what they said and were basically acting under one of the Primarch's command. You didn't have to be a Space Marine Legion made of Space Marines. It was a legion made up of anyone. So the entire thing about, hey, you can only have 10,000 Space Marines. At the time, that was also bullshit. I don't think that the numbers came out. It just most of them are around that level. It didn't really ever work because it's like, yeah, we have this many space Marines, but our Legion is actually all these other people, all the people on the ship, all the people on these planets who are working with us, who may or may not know of it. You see where I'm going with this one. This is the only space Marine Legion where normal people were considered Legionnaires because they were all doing the job. And that's kind of cool, but also makes it way crazier because you think the easy way to spot them would be look for the tall guy. And admittedly, after the piece of lore I just talked about was dropped, they went back to it's only the Space Marines. But that technically was part of it. It was then ignored and never really worked on to a fun extent. Alpha Legion, led by Alpharius and Omegon. The only Legion to have two Primarchs who were split as twins. The Alpha Legion are heretical, we think, and Maybe. specialize in destabilization of society and armies. Their entire shtick is the Hydra, because when you cut off one head, two more take its place. All of the Alpha Legion look exactly like their Primarch. Olive skin, shaved head. All claim to be Alpharius. All are liars. They make the largest use of sleeper cells and cultists in the Chaos Space Marine factions because it's extremely easy to take over a planet when you poison our water supply, burned our crops, and delivered a plague onto our houses. Where the Raven yeah. Guard use stealth and sabotage to eliminate their enemies, the Alpha Legion prefer to weaken them over time with sleeper agents, impersonations, basically anything you could imagine from a hardcore <laughs> spy movie or, or Cold War level espionage. Being Alpharius is not only only an honor. Being Alpharius is a requirement. There's a story yep. of someone chasing down an Alpha Legion agent for years upon years, and when they finally catch up with them and they see them, they see that the agent is wearing the same face as their pursuer, because this was the plan all along, to kill him and take his spot. We're talking facial reconstruction surgery, we're talking hacking, we're talking political assassination and impersonation, everything. They are Space Marines, in name only, because being a strong stoic warrior is not what the Alpha Legion is interested in. In fact, the Alpha Legion is interested in you not even knowing that the Alpha Legion is a thing. Uh is he actually going to mention the not entirely made of Space Marines part? I am Alpharius. You are Alpharius. We are all Alpharius in his Lord's glorious army. And that was Bricky's every single Warhammer Space Marine Legion in a nutshell. I 
love that. I loved how he got into the details. He brought up a lot of things that I wasn't expecting. Even mentioning at all that the Salamanders could go back to their family was more than I thought he would go into because he's been doing a very top-down look to how the Legions work. And that is a very specific detail that I'm that isn't one of the most immediate things when you first look at what the Salamanders are. So the fact that he even brought it up at all is really freaking cool. But also, I think I finished all of his Warhammer stuff and I'm kind of sitting here going like, I want more, damn it. Although on the other hand, my wallet is going, I should probably not do that because, uh, yeah, I've been spending way too much time and money painting these things. Also, it actually looks a lot better on camera than it does in real life. Wow, that is actually much nicer there. More importantly, though, I just... <laughs> more so i'm not sure if i should check out what he's done for a few other videos because he's put out a lot of games that i've actually been curious about and his coverage of them might be interesting or should i go into abductus ridiculousness because i've heard that's good and i should check it out and it's been heavily pushed to me by youtube so many of their thumbnails have been coming out i never watched them maybe i should i don't know i want your opinion on that if you know let me know if you don't also let me know because i'm kind of curious regardless more importantly, though, I'm going to now make sure I don't buy any of the things he's talked about, even though it's incredibly tempting. I'm just going to go and quietly cut my credit card in half so I don't get tempted. I'd, I'm not. I'm just uh, looking at the pile of things I bought watching Bricky's videos and definitely knowing I'm not lying about not buying anything based on his video. That uh, That's not a thing. I'm going to go and distract myself with kittens because at this point I need that just to not buy more plastic models i i i i will power i don't i don't need this i don't need this yeah i need this uh me definitely joking aside you guys know what to do there's a link below to the original video hit it up i'll see you in the next one adios now where was my credit card i need to go buy some models